Mark Savage. What up, man? Let's get it. What's going on, my brother? What's good with it? Ah, chilling, man. Thanks for joining the program, homie. Man, I appreciate you for having me, bro. Blessings, bro. Recently, the big story in hip hop um, was the death of a rapper by the name of FBG Duck. Are you familiar Correct. with FBG Duck and the whole Chicago drill scene? Absolutely. Very okay. familiar. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, RIP FBG Duck, man, one of the more talented, if you ask me, of that uh, Chicago drill scene. And um, they have this thing where they're up there, and I want your, your opinion on this, uh, Mark Savage. Okay. Uh, they have this thing up there that you're probably aware of, but not a lot of people are aware of, where they actually diss the dead homies of other gangs you know what i mean they're ops or whatever they have, yeah they literally have songs and i mean De fbg duck wasn't dead for for 24 hours and there was a bunch of diss songs out already just on him and diss videos and things like that but i would love your opinion on that aspect of hip-hop man uh to be honest man I'm gonna I'm keep it all the way a thousand with it man chicago really in my opinion has like taking this whole music scene man and the whole streets to the music i feel like they elevated it to the point where it's like beyond us bro i don't even think it's something it's contagious dog like in my opinion it's like back in the day you remember when the west coast had to beef with the east coast yeah and you know it was kind of like a lot of things you know the media was pumping and stuff like this but this shit man the shit they got going on man and yeah. the way it's being you know, a virus that's being gone to different cities, because even cities like down here in Atlanta, you know, it might not be necessarily dissing the dead, but like, man, it's it's like everybody's just dissing each other. And I was just like, hey, man, yeah, but you got a problem with somebody, hop on a song, let's diss them. You know what I mean? Let's do a video for it and hop in the videos with the guns and stuff, man. And they, they created that, man. I feel like everything we see right now is coming from that drill Chicago scene, if you ask me. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say that Brooklyn, everything that's coming out of Brooklyn right now is pretty much, you know, an imitation of, you know, the the, the Chicago drill scene. And yeah, even that mentality, Facts. that mentality is, like you said, it's 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 bleeding into the system and, and, and of hip hop. And I'm I'm not a fan of that dog. I'm a fan of just getting on the mic and battling word for word or whatever. But damn, when Facts. you're when you're dead home, like like that takes it to a whole other level, homie. Yeah. And, you know, personally, man, I, I think about it like this, you know, just from a global, I won't use any of my personal homies because I don't think anybody of the listeners understand, but I'm going to use somebody from the turf. I'm going to use somebody like Nipsey Hussle. Mm -hmm. If somebody came out with a diss right now saying, fuck Nipsey Hussle, dog. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, man, I just can't even imagine how we going to react to that, bro. Like, I just, man. They could. <laughs> they, that person would not last 24 hours. I mean, 60s are everywhere, first of all. And not even that. Diehard Nipsey fans are everywhere. Crips are everywhere. Bloods are like, they, you can't just say, nah, that, you're exactly nah. right, dude. It, it'd be a done deal. A done deal. Yeah, yeah. Shit, speaking on that, and not to give shine to this clown, but did you see that video today of Takashi 6 ix 9 walking oh. around L.A.? That broke my heart because I'm in it. I'm like 10. I'm not even 10 miles away from where that is. And I'm like, how did this motherfucker even get out of the car, man? Man. And you know what it is like? Uh, Because the that guy that actually uh, caught 6 9 on camera that was like, yo, that shade room. If he said he was out here, woo, 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 he was on the hour for like 120 seconds. Yeah. We know him. He's from the hood. So we contact him like, yo, bro, like what? Hmm. You know what happened? I had a few homies like they like, yo, we all tapped in on a. On the, on the phone call, man, and he kind of was just saying, like, yo, like, they was on, like, it, it was parts in that we didn't really get to see from the video, but mm -hmm. it was people out there that was like, yo, yo, what the fuck, like, yelling at oh, them. Word. And then the security was pointing guns at them, like, back up, like, oh, like we'll shoot type shit. thing. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm not there. I wasn't yeah. there to re verify that, but that's what the homies and some other people were saying, so, you know. And I, you know. You're not even wet. Wet. What's wet? What do you mean, what's wet? You landed in the river, but your clothes are all dry. Illusion, that's all. Just an illusion. Like that jukebox playing in the corner. That's an illusion, too. <laughs> Who's really ready to get this shit poppin'? Stay divine in this motherfucker, we not stopping. Lock in the game ahead of our time, but that was 20 years ago, we still killing the rhyme. It's the reunion, unification of the dope singers. I still throw it up and I'm still making the figures. I'm a grown ass man with a lot to live.
crib for Barefoot, walking on the sand and seashore Chilling, living my life to find a better way Overlooking the ocean before retirement day And I'ma get it, because I'm different, not like you Mamba mentality told me to do what I do Creativity, I'm a Libra I balance the scales, giving my gift to the world Like show and tell, but don't well I'm a package and maybe you will buy it Just give it one verse when you listen I'm trying to make it Open up the two eyes cloudy because of all night smoking on some clone guy fire got me higher than the ufo free thinking nose hope that smoke relax exhale slow down the rabbit hole we go never searching for the tricks freeze come out that night from what they say and they legit experience seize the moment opportunist i make love to the pressure but i go all in this seems to exist don't get me pissed your host out gets drowned in the abyss can't run my wave i leave you in a brush do rack list swim with the fishes can't find your body no reminiscing now you're wishing you never fuck with the birth never ending lesson learned i'm on your head lace front burn pass through your skin now you addicted nigga derm never ever cross the line you will get burned just sit back take notes and wait till turn i'm a little bit different Then you know it's lights out I be all in my feels Melting into my couch In another time zone In somebody else's house In the twilight zone Where the street lights out And the tambourine man Tells me about his whole plan Clouds turning into sand Oceans turning into land There's a gun in my hand And a penny in my pocket And I don't even know If I'ma make it to the rocket Cause they just counted down In the at three now So I'm running through the clouds With my luggage and my bible And a smile on my face Cause I'm in another place Where the turtle wins the race And he throws it in your face I don't give two fucks about it, yeah you know I'm about it, about it Shit, subscribe to the newspaper, read all about it Shit, read the whole book cause the cover's kinda plain I'm a little messed up if you know what I'm, I'm saying I'm a little bit different I don't know why I do what I do I just don't wanna be like you I just don't wanna be like you I'm a little bit different Cause the sky ain't always blue And the moon ain't always new Beginning to colonize. My friends will be arriving very shortly. I think they're going to like it here. Lovely area. So. so remote, so pleasant, so off the beaten track. Just the perfect spot for a colony, don't you think, Mr. Haley? But what are your thoughts on a person like the Takashi Six Nine? You know, and when I what I, I want to go a little bit deeper into that question, and what I mean is the person who joins a gang after they become famous. You know, there's I can name a bunch of them. You know, the Chris Browns, yeah. the, the Soldier Boys, like all of them. You know what I'm saying? What are your thoughts yeah. on on that type? Um, I think they're moving backwards, bro. I think they're moving backwards. You know, especially to be in your 20s or your 30s, however long it takes you to get put on, man. In my opinion. Just coming from somebody that was involved with that as a kid, man, we talking elementary, middle school, getting involved. For you to do that as a grown man, to me, you moving backwards. It's like, why you become a millionaire and then you doing something somebody like me did when I was, you know, <laughs> 11 or 12, yeah. Yeah, 11 or 12, mm -hmm. you know, and you doing that as a grown man. To me, it's backwards, man. That's just like going back and putting pampers on, man. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Is there like some extortion involved? Oh, Pay yeah, us, I was. You know? Yeah, for sure. I would say, honestly, from my point of view and just being, you know, tapped in and living in L.A. and things like that, I personally feel like 80 percent of it is extortion mm. because I feel like you got somebody like Chris Brown mm. and a lot of these other artists, man, they moved to L.A. because that's like the, the the mecca of like just this music industry and everything. They move out to the West and I feel like, man, they run into gang, I mean, it's gangs everywhere. You know, I mean, it's gang members everywhere. And it's gang members that live in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. It's gang members that's out there throwing, you know, Airbnbs with the homies and stuff out there, as we just seen the A-Trey gangsters doing yeah. that they had on the news and stuff. Like, we out, like, it's gang members everywhere. So somebody like Chris Brown, 
they might be out there, you know, scrolling. They might run into a game member and just because they don't want to get hurt or they don't want a situation like Pop Smoke situation, RP Pop Smoke, mm -hmm. you know, you get a situation like that happen. They want to prevent that. So they feel like the only way to prevent that in L.A. is to be a part of a, some particular set, man. And I feel like that's just, you know, friendly extortion. They don't want to get caught up in the mix. So they think, OK, let me let me pay these dudes or let me j jump over here and act like these my homies and give free features. So I can dag on make sure I'm I'm protected, you know. But that's what I feel like going on a lot. Yeah, yeah makes you a know? lot of sense. And every almost everybody I talked to pretty much has said the same exact thing. So I was just trying to re just re reiterate it, put another stamp on it. Um, Absolutely. But you mentioned Pop Smoke, man. R.I.P. He was gonna be one of the biggest. That he was already headed in that direction, man. Um, Crip rapper yeah. from New York came out to L.A. and just like um, my man Mark Savage mentioned earlier, they were in an upscale neighborhood, five, six, seven, eight million dollar homes, and someone caught him slipping, man. Straight up, there's no better way to put it. But my question for you is because you are in the in the music business, you do your thing, and you know you are gang affiliated what are your thoughts on how rappers besides extortion what we were just talking about and all that what are your thoughts on how rappers with gang ties should move when they're you know going from city to city my honest opinion man and this is just me even and i pray this interview hits a million views and people can quote me on this to the day i die man i honestly feel like man if you are gang affiliated and you become successful I personally feel like, man, you need to have people around you that have those gang ties. You need to have people around you like that. And I feel like you as a rapper need to have it with you as well, man. I know a lot of these rappers like, oh, I can't have a pistol. Man, look, if, if for everybody who's listening, man, follow Derek Grace, too, on Instagram. Man, he got a post-Trump package to show felons how they can carry weapons. Yep. everybody can carry weapons no matter what there's a way around everything bro you need to have that on you and have the homies around you if you gang affiliated jumping in this music industry and you happen to take off you need to have the homies around you i know people be like no nah, man you know homies be around thirsty and whoop, whoop. you know which ones you need to have around you. you know which ones you don't like i know which ones i'm calling when i touch down hey bro i'm here i'm calling t sam i'm calling gk i'm calling all these different individuals like hey bro i'm here tap in with me real quick i'm finna go to xyz you can't because i mean it's just on it's only so much you can do and then you never know who is who and then it's just best man you just keep people around you that know what they're doing and that they know how to they know how to watch you you know because see somebody like six nine man he don't understand you paying these you know i call them swat team members man you paying these swat team members to watch you mm -hmm. in la but them dudes don't know them cameras like we know them cameras they might not know them back alleys like we know them back alleys yep. so you might think you you know oh, oh yeah i'm good out here get and sniped from behind yeah you know so you know i'll leave it there on that one but yeah like you just gotta have those people around man you got to it's like the message has been lost how much money does a black life cost every time we kill another brother we keeping people employed who profit when we kill another how can we make a change Instead of pointing at others for the blame Shit, let's put some gasoline on the flame And burn this bitch down if they don't hear what we saying Better be strapped for the peace They talking about defunding police Gun stores sold out for six weeks I'm smelling something in the air and it reeks Black lives matter all the time Not just when one of them kills one of our kind Cause I don't ever see Al Sharpton speaking When Chicago has 30 murders in one week oh, man. How many ever we gon' lose? You tell me what we gon' do. This ain't the waste. Cause they ready to let loose. How many ever we gon' lose? United States, President State. If you lose, we shoot. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Pay attention, maybe slow down and just listen It's my state of mind, I'm dreaming, I'm on a mission Trying to push the world for peace, no more hate I got my black fist up in the corner to demonstrate 
let's get it straight this time Movement is all over the world, energy divine Where were you when the revolution got started? Black people fed up, more than really departed We all living on this earth, we human, nobody rally Marching in units in George Floyd, chanting loudly how many brothers have to die? We already realize equality's a lie. I'm trying to get it by enemies that be necessary. Red and blue lights flashing behind me can't be very scary. I see the police before they see me. Get out the car, roll the ground down on your knees. Please. The pigmentation of my skin, this current situation Got me feeling like the revolution's about to begin On the different type of vibes, so many ready for change Fist in the atmosphere, sick and tired of the games Being played by these slain, ain't no fucks given Only justification does I fit the description Trapped in the system, just another digit In a private prison, trying to keep the optimism It's tearing me to the core, how many more we gon' lose? We got the right to live a life without you and me Know what we do, enlighten the youth Feed the knowledge, give them tools Running the race, coming out of my shoe Taking it all the way back to my room it's a different time, we ain't going forward You see there's power in numbers, keep on ignoring You see us coming together, together we growing They feel the change that's coming, you better know I'm in here, I'm angry at 31, you angry at 16 How many have we gonna lose? Lil Boosie uh, has a famous Vlad TV interview where he says that it's impossible for an active gang member to have one foot in the street and one foot in the studio. Have you seen that interview? And if you haven't, what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I have seen that interview. My thoughts on that is Boosie's correct. Mm. Personally, I, I definitely feel like you can't do it. I personally feel like you can't. I'm not doing it. Mm. You know, it's, just, it's impossible. It is impossible because, I mean, it's bound to happen where – you know, you're blowing up, your music's going, and you putting out these music videos, and especially with social media, man, you might have just did a, a certain submission last week on some dudes, and they remember your face, and they like, yo, this the rapper, yo, this the dude, all right, let's follow him. Mm -hmm. So now you got fake pages following you, man, it's the game now, the fake pages following you, you you know, you an artist, so your page is public, they going on your pages, when you going live, yo, yo, we in the trenches right now, woo, -doo -woo -doo -woo. they like, oh, yeah, yeah, hey, bro. He just posted that he over woo woo woo, woo and then mm -hmm. you getting somebody pulling up on you, blowing your head off. You know what I mean? And that's the game these days, man. You can't do both. Mm. You can't. Now, when did you personally first hear about Bloods and Crips? Was it around because it was around you, or because you know you heard, saw it on the movie Colors, or you know Menace to Society, or something like that? So my first time personally hearing about Bloods and Crips, I was ten years old. And I remember I was in school and I remember after school, they had this park and rec area where like a bunch of dudes used to go to hoop and stuff like that. A bunch of the middle school dudes, high school dudes, you know, some dudes that was local. And uh, I remember like seeing Crip on the freaking basketball court. And I was like, damn, what the fuck is this? You know, and I looked and I was like, yo, it's Crip, you know, nobody really, especially dudes my age didn't really know. Like they like, yo, I think it's like, you know, they didn't really know. I think it's like a click or something, man. I'm like, okay, so I'm thinking it's like, it's like a click. And then, man, as soon as I seen it on the, the basketball court, I remember beating this dude named, uh, they call him Baby Blue. I remember this dude named Baby Blue. I'm like, yo, bro, like, cause he used to wear the blue bandana all the time. I'm like, yo, is you a part of this, this crip shit that's all on the walls and the, you know, the, the fucking basketball court? He like, yeah, cuz I'm a part of that, you know? And I'm like, where, like, what is it? He said, oh, it's a gang, you know, it's from LA. And I'm like, you from LA? He like, yeah, I'm from LA. 
And I'm like, oh, word. I said, what you do? You know what you're doing out here, all the way out here? He's like, yo. It's like, man, I got kicked out of freaking Los Angeles. Like, I'm not allowed back. I'm like, damn. And he said he had a granny that stayed in Charlotte. You know what I mean? Where I was born at. I was born in Charlotte. So I'm like, damn, you from L.A. out in Charlotte, you know? And then that was my first time hearing about it. From that point on, man, it just seemed like as soon as I put my eyes on it, I was able to identify it from that point forward, man. So, Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in my 40s, and when I was coming up, Banging on Wax was a big album. And one of my best friends is from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, which isn't too far from where you are. And That's he told song. me he told me that th- that once that album came out, he said that he said Crips and Bloods were spouted out everywhere. And we're talking to a gentleman in his you know almost 50, 45, 40, 45, 50 or whatever. Facts. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it, it's just so interesting how you know shit from the West Coast can spread like that. Um, do you, would you say? I guess you, to your to the best of your knowledge, when did your hood or how did your hood make it to to Charlotte? Uh, so personally, um, what happened with us, man, uh, you know, I feel like a lot of us on the East coast and down South, we had it misconstrued so much. Cause I feel like a lot of people saw it. And like you said, the banging on wax stuff and everybody was like, yo, I get like a lot of the dudes that was like my big homies. I feel like they just saw it, man. And they just was like, yo, like we, we going to do that. Like we had a dude named Paco, Paco, uh, Greer, you know what I mean? He was one of like the main dudes and he was from, he was another dude that was from Los Angeles. Another dude, I got kicked out of LA. I'm like, damn, what you doing here? You know, his freaking mom was from Charlotte. He like, yeah, my mom from Charlotte, man. So I moved out here with her cause LA put me out. I can't go back. I'm like, damn, that's f-ed up. They do people like that in LA, man. But he came out here and then he was like, yeah, you know, I'm from the sixties though. We like, what the fuck is the sixties? Mm-hmm. He like, yo, y'all ever seen boys in the hood? And we laughing about it. Like, yeah, we seen that. He's like, yo, that shit about us. I'm like, word, you know me think about it like, what? No way, bro. Like, hell no. Nah. He like, bro, all that shit, yeah. they, bro, they had to come to us and ask to film that shit in our neighborhood and shit like that. And we like, damn, that's crazy. And we was, we was like inspired by that. We like, yo, we want to, you know, we want to boss up like that. You know, we want to come to Charlotte, want to shoot videos about us and shit too, you know? And uh, yeah, man, he just started really tapping people in. SIP Mud, man, who's from LA also. You know, them folks, man, he would have folks coming from L.A. out here. Like, we got homies out here. They was, bro, it's crazy to know, like, how, like, cats in L.A. would see their section mm-hmm. outside of L.A. And they would be amazed by, it. like, bro, y'all bang the hood out here? And they just look like, what? Like, mm-hmm. like, yeah, bro, that's just spread like wildfire, bro. It take one person to just come to another city and be like, yo, I want to start a fraction here. Mm-hmm. And boom, there it is. Yeah. So yeah. Paco was our, Paco was my my line my direct line from la and then from that point forward as i grew older i started going to la myself and to this sex to this day you know i created my own relationships and you know tapped in and did what i had to do to make sure they knew my face and know who i was so To get rich, why not? I'm young, don't want to work forever. Need some money and some talent, and gotta be a little clever. But I'm better than most of the people out there. No fear, no run away, no scare. But beware what you're looking for might just happen. Sold out crowds applauding, hands clapping, zapping and Roger, baseball, the Dodger. She said her body was tight, I had to massage her. So now I'm getting some lotion, blowing in the bedroom, mind is coasting. Overdosing on a drug called love, an advocate for peace, I'm giving up free. Hugs, but I can thug if you want me to Watch me gang bang the beat They call me step bro Which way do you ride? Which way don't you really wanna come inside? Which way, which way, baby? Which way, which way, baby? Which way do you ride? Which way don't you really wanna come inside? Which way, which way, baby? Which way, which way, baby? You know we dipping and we moving fast, steady. Better get ready, cause we might crash. Betty came over fucking with cake, told her, get out of my house, I'm gaining too much weight. Wait, but I'ma still be in pimp mode. 1977, the year nuts explode. 
something I was born to the world Daddy not knowing I would be a boy or a girl A king, a god, everything in between I'm trying to figure it out, asleep What does it mean? Eyes open, hoping, no hope but reaction One foot in front of the other moment of gaining traction Highway stress free No need to blow trees It's the American dream Living in Southern California, people know what I mean Come on Which way do you ride? Which way don't you really want to come inside? Which way, which way, baby? Which way, which way, baby? Which way do you ride? Which way don't you really want to come inside? Which way, which way, baby? Which way, which way, baby? Exercise in my brain, my body doing the same Chasing money and fame, I gotta get it Cause my dreams keep me up at night Never give up, knock down, but continue to fight this life A roller coaster full of ups and downs And when you on the top, you can see the whole town But on the way to the bottom, passing people you know The dude pushing the demo, saying that he can flow Yo, just keep grinding, practice makes perfect Been rapping all of my life and I know that it's worth it It's straight love, I get nothing but joy That feeling that you get when you open a new toy Damn, it's so dope, you wanna show Everybody look at what I can do is much more than a hobby Verbal karate, Bruce lead the flow You used to feel me but you don't love me no more Which way do you ride? Which way don't you really want to come inside? Which way, which way baby? Which way, which way baby? Which way do you ride? Which way don't you really want to come inside? Which way, which way baby? Which way, which way baby? Which way, which way, baby? Which way, which way, baby? Not to, you know, bring it down, but it's an important, unfortunate situation in hip-hop history. But take yourself back to March 31st, 2019, and, you know, you heard about the death of Nipsey Hussle. You know, talk to me about, you know, what the hood was feeling, how, you know, how you were feeling and, and just what went down that day. Yeah, so it was it was fucked up, man, because let me tell you, I was in L.A. in, in 2019 when he got killed and I was actually on 64th. Um, that's the street in the hood, man. I was out there and I was actually at a, one of the homegirls crib, man, and we was chilling. I'm out there. I was focused on, like, making some music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just one of them days, man, you know, wasn't nobody. I just wasn't trying to be out that day. And then, like, we had heard the news. I saw it on my phone first. And at first, I was just like, yo, you know, like, ain't no way. Like, we can just go right up here. Like, the, I mean, from 64th to Crenshaw and Slauson, like, three, four minutes. I'm like, but we can just drive up there and see. Man, like, as soon as we saw, like, the news, we was like, yo, if it's real, we'll be I seen the fucking helicopters in the sky and shit. I'm like, yo, did he really get killed? You know, because I seen the messages, and them shits kept popping back to yeah. back to back to back. And they wasn't letting nobody over there and shit, man. I was like, yo, this man really got shot. You know, we just out. We can't get nowhere near him. We can't see him. None of that. We just, you know, all we can do is just be like, fuck. Like, we just hope you make it through. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, we got the news later on. You know, he passed away and shit, man. But, yeah, I was actually in L.A. at the time, man. It was fucked up, man. Mm -hmm. I was I was hurt about that one because Nipsey, you know, as you as me and you already had conversations off the interview, man, like Nipsey was one of them dudes I had a close relationship with that was, a yeah. to me, an artist that made it, and he was thorough about it, man. So that shit hurt. Yeah, man. Yeah. And from what I read in those text messages, it seemed like you guys were, you know, uh, um, you know, he let me, you know, read a couple of DMs between him and Nipsey. And yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing that you had that that relationship with dude, man. What was he like? Yeah. He talked to me about just, you know, his aura and everything, man. I, 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 I never had the chance to meet him, but I've heard great things. Yeah. I mean, Nip, man, to me, like, granted, people like Pac-Man and Jay Stone, they were his artists, so granted, they were around him way more than me. I was just one of them dudes that's like, yo, he from the hood, yo. I fuck with a little dude, man, you know, mm -hmm. but Nipsey was one of them dudes, man. Like, you could come around Nip, and Nip was one of them dudes that's always like, yo, you straight, you need something, you good. He was one of them type of people that's always trying to make sure whoever around him, they straight. And if something's an issue, he want to make sure it's solved. Like, what's wrong? You know what I mean? What happened? You know, tell me what happened. Let's go fix it. You know, he was one of them dudes, man, and 
man, had a good spirit, man. Dude was so dope, man. And then he wanted everybody to be put on game about, you know, how to how to generate this this wealth, man. He was putting us on so much stuff that a lot of stuff, I mean, his interviews tell it all, but a lot of stuff he didn't even put in interviews. He was telling us. And I mean, it was just like crazy. Like even about the taxes, man, he was telling us about, you know, him and Black Sam with the taxes. He was putting us on game about so much stuff, man. Some stuff to this day, like I, I went and picked up a tax book um, that I had currently, I read about a year ago, which I need to refresh my memory on that. But uh, I picked up a tax book just because he mentioned it. Like, yo, it's a tax book out there, man. Y'all need to grab it. Woo, 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 you know what I mean? And I was like, bet, you know, let's go grab that, you know figure out what we gonna do on that and you know the real estate and all that stuff man it was just so much bro some stuff i just wish i had a recorder with me when he would talk man just so i could play it for people like yo this is what nick would say when i was around him or this is when he said when he met me just so people can know that's just not bullshit like that man was really like that you know yeah so yeah yeah and and you obviously wouldn't think that he wouldn't be here right now so there's no reason to record but you feel me yeah man yeah damn yeah what a loss, man. What a loss. How old were you when you got put on? I was 11. 11 and 12, man. Those are the biggest Those are the biggest ages that I hear. 11 yeah, and 12. Man. I was 11, man. Yeah. Yep. How does it work, you know, out there when you get put on? So when we got put it on, man, you know, we get, you get quartered on. When you get quartered on, you know, depending on who orchestra you get put on, you know, usually, man, if it's, you know, if they put out the word, you know, they putting a the homie on, man. If it's 12 people out there, you're going to squabble all 12 that showed up for you put on. Mm. You know what I mean? You'll get one-on-ones. You'll get some two-on-ones. You get a couple more one-on-ones. You get a couple more two-on-ones. And mm. to be honest, depending on, like I said, who orchestrating it, everybody put on different. Because I don't see motherfuckers get ran and still wasn't from the hood. Mm. So, you know what I mean? I don't see dudes get and ran like a mother beat the fuck up sent to the hospital. And then they got put on. And you get somebody like me who they know thorough. They like, man, we know this motherfucker boxing shit already. You know, he athletic. This nigga tall. Like, we done seen him squabble already. You know, we just got to get you put on. All right, bet. Come on. Let's get it over. You know what I mean? Get out there. Show them your squabble game, man. That's all they really want to see. They just want to see, man, if you get caught up in a bad situation where it's five against one and you just there, they just want to know your ass ain't finna run on them mm -hmm. so they can talk shit about the hood. We had your homie running at the mall today or we seen that motherfucker at the park and he ran from us and shit because then the homie's gonna put a foot in your ass anyway you might get put off you might get you with dp or whatever but hey mm. you know you just gotta prove you gotta have that heart man these days and age i don't even know if they still doing put-ons man like because nowadays man everybody pulling out pistols i mean fighting don't even matter no more so yeah man that's a bitch <laughs> that's a bitch right there yeah uh, man. yeah man dude um do you guys have a big latino gang presence out there uh charlotte wise yeah man they do um charlotte it's like uh ms13 the serenios um and we have a couple like uh other, what was it 18th street mm -hmm. a couple of them cats too man but other than that those are majority of the, the span hispanic gangs mm -hmm. what's the yeah. relation what's the relationship like between the latino gangs and the black gangs so the latino gangs and the black gangs man it depends because like i'm gonna be honest like it was times we would see the Serenios and you know they flag the blue bandana. We would see them and be like, yo, what up, man? You know what I mean? Like fucking with them, like me go, you know, shit like that. They'll throw their hand up, like, hey, what up, man? What up? You know, shit like that. But then you have certain times where like, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes we catch catch some Hispanics walking down the street, man, and niggas, some of the hom homies be hungry, man. They'll fuck around and beat the shit out of them Hispanics and take their money. Mm -hmm. Then you know the Hispanics come back, now they got problems with the blacks and shit like that, man. So that should be on and off, bro. Like it's on and off relationship, man. Damn. Yeah. Hopefully it stays off. That would exactly. be, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, man. Lately, you know, Chris, like I said, I've been traveling. I've been everywhere, man. I haven't been, I haven't lived in Charlotte in years, but I can tell you like for sure, like last time I was there it was off. So I just pray mm -hmm. it's still like that. But yeah. That's what's up. To the best of your knowledge, has there ever been a a gang truce in Charlotte? Even if it was just never. for a few days, never, huh? Just on. No, never. On uh -uh. since day one. No gang truce. Yeah, all since day one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. never, never a gang truce. Uh -uh. Do Do you guys have, um, you know, folks and and that whole, um, you know, the GDs, BDs, things like that down there? Uh, yeah. So we do have the GDs, and then we do have a couple guys that bang Vice Lord. Okay. Um, and back in the day, I'm not sure. Um, one of the cats, man. Yeah, I think I seen one of your interviews 
Um, the guy that was from uh, Dirt, the guy that's from Harlem 30s. Yeah, yeah, from um, York. Harlem Smiley, yeah. Yeah, Harlem Smiley, he spoke on it too, man. Uh, back in the day, the East Coast and down South, man, they had the eight ball. Did he talk about the eight ball in your show? I think he did, yeah, it sounds familiar, yeah. Yeah, so the eight ball was huge out here, bro, like because – the, the GDs and the Crips were together, bro. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you, of course, if you put the pitchfork with the C, it make an eight. So that's how the eight ball came about, man. The GDs and Crips had to team up because the UBN, bro, and the nine trade gangsters, they was large, mm. especially like when Brick Squad hit the scene and the music, bro. Mm. Oh, my fucking God, bro. I didn't never see so many fucking bloods pop up in my life. Damn. Like, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I, at that time, I swear, it probably was like four to one ratio. Mm. Like, it was nuts how many bloods was like out of nowhere on the east coast and down south, you know. And it was just like, yo, what the fuck? And then you know, GDs, you know, for the ones that were at least for the ones outside of Chicago, they wore blue bandanas, they damn self. Mm-hmm. So a lot of bloods took that as if like they were crips. So mm-hmm. that really initiated their beef with bloods outside of Chicago. Like, yo, we ain't got nothing to do with that, you know, with the bloods and crips thing. But then, you know, they end up getting involved because Bloods is banging on them because it's like, shit, y'all wearing blue bandanas, motherfuckers. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so that caused a problem out here. And then, you know, of course, you know, there was no social media around this time or none of that shit for motherfuckers to tap in and right. figure out that the eight ball was false. We thinking that shit was real deal. Holyfield out there, like mm-hmm. GDs and Crips was together, but that shit wasn't thorough, man. But we, we made it thorough out here back in the day. But, um, okay. yeah. When you say Brick Squad, are you talking about the whole Waka Flocka, like Brick Squad and shit like that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a correlation between them and Bloods and or, or whatever the case is. Oh yeah, man. When Gucci, when Gucci first dropped, um, Ice so Cream. icy yeah, with so Jeezy. Icy. Yeah. Yeah, and then he came out, and then you know when Gucci dropped that, it's just another day, and the East that with the red bandana mm-hmm. on his head. Yeah. Oh my God, bro! He started. A epidemic and then what made it worse you know everybody knew jeezy was cripping so when the whole thing happened uh, with yeah so when the whole thing happened with gucci killing jeezy people yeah yeah everybody was like yo jeezy a bitch everybody was you know gucci mm. that nigga and it just like everybody just want to join wave the bloods where it's head bro them crip niggas weak like mm. it was crazy bro it was crazy Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thing, I'm gonna have to go down a rabbit hole and check that shit. I n- I never put the the two and two together, man. Yeah, that's what happened. Brisk Squad, because you know Walker, and then they had, you know, that whole team was Bloods, you know, mm-hmm. and then especially with them being in Atlanta, so down south, we for sure we only three Charlotte only three hours away from Atlanta, okay. so it was like we felt all of that way when Brisk Squad hit and niggas just started picking up red bandanas out of nowhere. We felt all of that heat, man, mm-hmm. all of it. Damn. So. Damn, dog. Yeah. yeah, man. Thanks for putting me up on game, man. Um, shit, man. Oh, I yeah. want to definitely give you a chance to promote what you have going on and um, tell us, you know, where we can find you and, and what's next. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Hey, definitely uh, my Instagram, uh, of course, is CEO Young Savage. That's all spelled correct. Um, and then my YouTube, man, you can find me at Mark Savage. Uh, and then also, um, on my end right now, oh, yeah, all platforms too, uh, iTunes, Apple music, um, whatever you got, Spotify, I'm on all it. Just type in Mark Savage. I'll pop up. Um, and right now, um, what I got going on, man, we got our merchandise cracking right now. Yeah. Saw uh, that. You got the clothing line. Talk to me about that. Yeah. The clothing line. Yeah. So, uh, it's me and of course, uh, my big homie in LA, you know, from the sixties also T Sam. You know, we got uh him and then my brother Dre, man. We all came together and we created the bag chasers, you know, clothing. Um, we got the website dropping probably like in a couple more days, man. And um, yeah, it's based out of LA, of course. You know, we doing everything from downtown, from the fashion district, all that good shit. And um, yeah, we getting it bubbling, man. We really putting it together. Uh, people been macking in. We've been getting hella sales, you know. So I know when we dropped this website, it's gonna go crazy. You y'all can follow that on Instagram. Um, at Bag Talk University, all spelled correct, man. And then the website will be out soon. It's probably going to be www.bagtalkapparel.com. Mm. Um, so, yeah, y'all can tune in. The website going to drop real soon. Um, so, yeah, and then on top of that, um, I got a new – my new single, my recent single called Goal Zone is out right now. That's what I'm pushing. The visual will be out probably by the end of August, early September. Um, and then I got like a four track EP I'm going to drop before, um, before the winter, I'm going to drop it before the winter. 
Um, and then y'all can expect some visuals off of there, depending on what songs everybody's with off of there. I said I might shoot all four visuals for all four of them just because. I say do that. Um, yeah, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, just putting out that content, man. And, um, yeah, y'all can definitely expect that from me, man. I'm just going to keep pushing merch, um, music, and then, of course, like, on a side note, man, I do real estate. So, man, if y'all need real estate, man, and y'all want to tap in commercial units, residential properties, and things like that, I got houses in the hood. We got two houses in the hood yeah. right now that has families in them. Nice. You know what I mean? I got a house off of uh, Don Block, which is a famous, notorious street from the 60s. We got a crib off Don Block, and we got a crib um, off Hyde Park, you know. Um, so two families are renting those out right now, man. Um, we do stuff. I got properties in Charlotte. We got properties in Mississippi. My brother Trey, uh, who orchestrated the real estate firm, I just kind of joined on as like his senior vice president. You know, he's from Mississippi, so, you know, he, he put me on game with the real estate, and I've been kind of joining hands and learning as I've been going. But, of course, if y'all got any questions, any concerns, if y'all want to know anything, y'all want to get into REITs, if y'all want to know anything about, you know, that's just doing that's Airbnb, that's yeah, all of that, email me, mark at dirtcapitalgroup.com. That's D-U-R-R-C-A-P-I-T-A-L.com, man. Hit me on there. That's what the fuck I'm talking about, dog. Dre, this is why I do my motherfucking show right here. It's for people like this to drop game like that, dog. We need more black people in real estate. This motherfucker said REITs. I hope there are motherfuckers Googling REIT right now. Look that shit up. Real Estate Investment Trust is very important. Listen to this man. Follow him. You're a very knowledgeable dude, man, and I hope to have you on soon, homie. We'll, do hey, this. we'll have to do a part two. We'll do a part two or something. Let's do it, man. Anytime. You know, you got it. Sounds good, homie. Have a safe night. I'll talk to you soon. All right, you too, bro. Right. Be safe. Peace, man. All right. Peace. Good shit. Hey, you're looking at two homeowners right now. Dre yeah. is a homeowner. Yeah. I am a homeowner. Yeah. It's and like, it's say it real slow because I don't want people to get Homo. <laughs> Dre's a homo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you still on the phone? Uh, yeah, I was saying. <laughs> oh, shit, my bad. <laughs> peace, homie. <laughs> nah, you good. Yeah, you good. All right, peace. <laughs> yeah, I'm a homeowner. Dre, you're a homeowner, dog. That's the best. You know what I'm saying? It's the best feeling because, you know what? If anything ever fails, at least we have a place to stay, eh? Yeah. If we ever need to sell, yeah. our house is worth more than it was when we bought it. Uh, yeah, So I sure. would recommend everyone out there to at least invest, at least, you know, become a homeowner. Is Pay off all your debt. Like, first of all, pay off all your debt, all your bullshit debt. It's really hard to advance or do anything without paying off your debt. So pay off your debt yep. and, and, you know what I'm saying, and then start investing but dude man but everybody's leaving everybody's leaving. everybody's leaving california joe anyway. rogan's leaving yeah, joey, joey diaz, diaz. Leaving. when, when i saw joey diaz is leaving that broke my heart yeah. i like joey diaz more than i like joe rogan no offense yep. joe i, I yep. i'm a big joey diaz podcast fan i love the church yep. and he's just a real mother yeah. and i really like that guy and to hear that he's moving to jersey because you know and, and you know what oh, god that, that that was a bummer right there because he has a great fucking show his stories are the best dude yep i mean thankfully they'll be forever ingrained in youtube and hopefully yeah i, I feel like they will be but you know like howard stern is like all oh, these older uh, you can still check out their old work but man there's a that's a bummer that um you know we won't be getting his any. producer's going to rehab uh it, wait so he's going to in, in wiomingo or whatever no, uh, uh wisconsin Lee, Lee you talk about lee right yeah he's going to, he's going to rehab he said he was going to live with his parents is I mean, that not I, true I, I guess he's doing both Really? He's gonna he's gonna go live with his parents allegedly. Huh? He's gonna okay, you got to throw allegedly in there. Yeah, because we don't want a lawsuit. Uh, Remember, Dre? No, 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 no. We no. don't want a lawsuit. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Okay, huh? Yeah, no, that you're right. People are leaving California, man. First of all, I two years ago, if you'd have told me if I would ever leave California, I would say no. I'm like, nah. I'm staying here. It's a done deal. It's official. This is my home. You know, but I'm starting to reconsider it more. If not leaving California, definitely leaving Los Angeles. Going up north somewhere, away from... It's possible. That's what I'm starting to think. It's a Ventura County and places like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, there are some places up there that they're gentrifying. They're, they're, you could buy a nice house on the beach, I'm telling you, for like seven, 800000 California is getting pretty bad. You're it's right. It's getting bad tax-wise and everything, man. And, it's, and, and, and homeless everywhere. I mean, it's becoming a shit. I hate to say it, but it's becoming a shithole, man. Um, there's the beautiful parts of it. I, I, I love the mountains. I love the beach. I love the desert. But I hate stepping over homeless people every single morning. Every 
morning. There's some I'm, every day I'm getting asked by somebody for change. Can I have change? Can I have change? So I, I I'm just I'm tired of that, man. Are you gonna ever leave California, Dre? I'm trying not to. But I mean, you go, I'm not rich either. So yeah, it's that's hard. the thing, dude. Yeah, I don't want to. <sighs> we just got to start thinking of ways to to make money. That's the thing. I mean, I I have side hustles and things like that, and um, there, everybody out there, you're not gonna get rich. You're not gonna be able to stay where you want if you're working a nine to five. You know, you're you're gonna you're gonna get by. Everybody's gonna get by, right? Like yeah. we're gonna get by. You know what I'm saying? You used to have to start cutting here and there, but. I encourage everybody out there, especially people of color, because the white people are doing it. You know, the Asians are doing it. They're all investing, man. Invest. Download the Robinhood app and just invest fifty dollars. Be just careful though. Why? So oh, because it's it's yeah. Any it, what? Because it's security, right? Security purposes. No, because some kid committed suicide because he made. Some oh money. my god! <laughs> yeah, he woke up and he had like seventeen million dollars, or he lost like seven or something, right? Seventeen thousand. Yeah. Yeah, and then he killed seven hundred thousand. Yeah. Well, that. He was probably a special case, but I would definitely down, download the Robin Hood app and at least get a taste of what investing tastes like and what it feels like. And that $50, if you invest now, now's the time. The market is down. Now is the time to invest. Invest in airlines. Invest in video game companies because people are not flying, but they will be flying in two years, and that stock is going to go right back up. Invest in video game companies because people like Dre spend all day day playing video games it is the <coughs> one of the most biggest genres out there and you might as well capitalize off of it i'll give you one right now 10 cent invent invest in 10 cent stock t-e-n-s t-e-n-c-e-n-t -E i i i went in at 50 dollars a share it's now at 70 just four months later that's a little bit of game that you're gonna get right here on dusty vision radio because i'm not that high actually i didn't even finish my joint usually i finished my joint i've had like a bunch of beers on dusty vision radio every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific. That's 10 p.m. for my friends on the East Coast. Make sure you check out all the other dope shows we have on this channel Monday through Sunday. We'll see you next week. Same place, same time. Peace.